Hello guys, welcome to another episode of Homeschooling with Zena. And right now it's 7.44 p.m. That's in China, so we're in Shanghai, so I'm guessing you guys, if you're in New York, maybe it's uh, 12 hours behind. So um, we're going to be doing the discovery of silk. I'm pretty tired, so you might hear me yawn a little bit. Can't be helped. <laughs> okay, I hope that this series gets more views. It, we've done a lot of vids. We really haven't gotten any views so far. Did you show the TV? Huh? Did you show the TV? Show the what? The TV. No. No, see? No video. Just the audio. Come on, sit down. Okay, How so... you know there's no video? This discovery of silk. Alright, I'm gonna try to make this bigger. So I'm hoping that we get more subscribers. We've been at 51 for about two months now, so... I don't know, I'm just gonna keep on trying until I get a... We get more subscribers. Okay. So, we're going to review what did people in ancient times, well, why did people in ancient times want to live near rivers? So they could grow crops and catch water to drink. So right. They can travel. Let's look at the map from our last lesson. Where is China on the map? Oh, let's try to get that. Where is China on this map? I can see. I can see China. Those thing that looks like the water. Waves, right? Waves of China. Queen. I guess you can call it waves. Uh, it's strange. I'm trying to. Marky. Okay. Where is the Yellow River? So the Yellow River is. It, right. It's um, above the Yangtze River. Mm -hmm. Mark the Yellow River is not next to the Yangtze River. Oh, oh, well, yeah, because I guess this is really far. It's next to the Great Wall. Where is the Yangtze River? Well, yeah. Here they are close together, kind of. Okay. It must be dangerous around here. You have mountains and rivers. Why would it be dangerous? Well, if you don't know how to swim, or if you don't know how to climb mountains, or I don't know. Okay, so the people of ancient China, excuse me, lived along the Yellow and Yangtze rivers, like people in Egypt, Meso. Potamia and in India, they were farmers. They grew grain and raised pigs, sheep, and cow. You know, in the south of China, farmers grew rice. Rice will only grow where the ground is very wet most of the time. Farmers settled near the Yangtze River because it floods every year and keeps the ground wet. People in China were more than farmers. They invented many new things, too. Today, we'll hear a famous story about an ancient... Oh, sorry, about an accident that turned into a great discovery. Yeah, I'm a bit tired. I'm reading wrong. Um, so, let's look hear this story. Uh Sorry. Once upon a time in China, the empress was sitting in her garden under the shade of a mulberry tree. Outside the garden walls, she could hear the faint cries of street merchants selling candy, jewelry, and tea. But within the walled garden, all was peaceful. 
Only the rustling of leaves on the mulberry tree disturbed the quiet. Men lie, the empress called to her maid. I shall eat my afternoon meal in the garden. Please serve it out here. Soon, Men Lai brought the empress's meal: turtle meat with garlic and ginger, candied fruit, rice, and a pot of steaming tea. The empress loved the rich smell of tea, so she lifted the cup to her nose. But just then, something splashed into the cup. The empress peered down. Floating in the hot tea was a soft ball, small and white. She glanced up at the mulberry tree, and what do you think she saw? Hundreds of little white cocoons dangled from the branches over her head. Inside the cocoons, worms were changing into moths. Soon they would chew through the cocoons and fly away. Look, Men Lai," the Empress said. "A cocoon has fallen into my tea. Let me get you a fresh cup, Your Highness," the maid offered. "No, wait," said the Empress. The hot tea had begun to unravel the cocoon. When the empress carefully lifted the cocoon, she saw a thin, shiny strand hanging from the bottom. The whole cocoon seemed to be made from this strand, which was wrapped thousands of times around the silkworm within. Pulling gently, the empress drew out the strand. She circled the garden a dozen times, the strand trailing behind her so lightly that it floated on the wind. If only I could weave this into cloth," the emperor said. "What a robe I could make for my husband, the emperor!" But my lady," the maid exclaimed, "the strand is too thin to weave." Perhaps," the emperor said. "But let us see. Pick another cocoon, Min Lai, and we will unravel it." That afternoon, the empress and her maid unraveled more shining strands from the silkworm cocoons. Then they twisted them together until they were as thick as thread. By the time the sun had set, they had made many threads. The empress then called for her dressmaker. Could you weave a cloth from threads such as these? She asked, "I have never seen anything like them." The dressmaker marvelled. "They are finer than hair, yet soft as the petal of a flower." The woman took the threads away and wove them into a cloth that shone like melted silver, and from that cloth the empress made a robe for the emperor. When he saw it, he gasped with wonder. From now on, he said, "We will call this marvelous cloth silk. The secret of how to make it must never leave the palace, and only the royal family shall know of the treasure yielded by silkworm cocoons." Okay, that was an interesting story. Um, people in China still tell this story of how they discovered silk. Did it really happen this way? We don't know for sure. But one thing is certain: China became famous for its amazing silk cloth. No one else in the world knew how to make it until the secret was revealed many years later. In ancient China, women did the work of making silk. It wasn't easy. First, the women sorted the cocoons. I say, I guess. Then, they had to boil each cocoon and carefully pull out the single strand. 
Wow, they had to boil each cocoon. Then the, or the strand is stuck together. And if you pull it, it will break off. They twisted the strands together into threads. Only then could they add color to the threads by dyeing them red, yellow, or green. After all that, they were ready to weave the thread in the cloth. Wow, you have to kill a lot of bugs for this. When they finished this, the women often stitched dragons and tigers onto the cloth with a needle and thread. Or sometimes they painted leopards, crows, and toads on the cloth. Silk became so valuable that a pound of it was worth a pound of gold. And it became so famous that people who lived in China were known as the Silk People. Silk? Today, silk is still one of the most expensive fabrics in the world. Yeah, silk. Uh, we read a story about an empress who made a great discovery long ago. What land did she live in? China. According to the legend, what fell into the empress's cup of tea? A cocoon. Mm-hmm. What kind of thread did she make from the cocoon? Um, she made clothes. Thread but what was the thread called? Thread. Oh, silk. Mm-hmm. What happened to silk and the people of China because of it? They can make beautiful clothes. And mm -hmm. silk is very important to them. What did the Chinese people do with this discovery? They, they began to, to, to send it to other people. Mm -hmm. So other people know silk too. And well, they made lots of beautiful silk cloth. Silk became very valuable and the people of China became famous for it. All right. Silkworms in action. So we're going to see what they look like. Silkworms. I can guess what they make. Silk. Silkworms spin fibers out of their bodies. They spin a cocoon for themselves. The uh. cocoon can be undone and the silk fibers wound onto reels. Imagine how many cocoons they need for one sari. Yeah, a lot. That's what I said, a lot of animals. It's gonna die. Yeah. That's uh, why butterflies make a lot of eggs, so they can keep their numbers. Okay, so that's the end of this lesson. They always have a beyond the lesson. Um, the art of making silk. I guess I can try to open it. Open. Open what? I didn't want that to happen. Okay. So, um... What are the steps that are made to, to make silk? I'm guessing that's what it is. All right. And um, that's the end of this lesson today. I hope you enjoy these mini lessons that we have. And uh, please don't forget to like and subscribe because we do appreciate the subscribers. We haven't made one subscriber yet, I think. Like in a long time okay so goodbye